Hey everyone, it's Sean from Tall Tree Audio. Today I'm going to show you how to create a template in Cubase 10 specifically for composing with virtual instruments. The goal is to be faster and more efficient with your composing. So with that, let's jump right in. We are going to start completely from scratch, so let's open an empty project. Okay, the first thing you do is create folders. So we're going to use folders to organize all of our group tracks, all of our instruments, all of our sends, everything. I'm just going to create like 10 of them. Okay, I'll show you how I organize my instruments and then you can use that to create your own special way. Now, the template I'm creating is going to be used for orchestral music or trailer music, but honestly you can use it for whatever genre you want. You would just change the folders uh, for your group instruments. I'm going to go ahead and name all the folders right now. Okay, we named all of our folders. Now let's go ahead and color them separately. In the latest Cubase update, you can go into Project and Project Colors Setup, and you can choose specific colors that you want. Now I've already chosen uh, colors that suit me, uh, but there's all sorts of options. Go into Presets, choose your number of basic colors, your number of color tints, and set that as a default. So store color set as default. That way, across all your projects, it's going to be the same. Great. A simple way to change the color is to just click on your folder track or any instrument track and press Control, and then use the scroll on the mouse, and it will change colors for you in a gradient. Now that we've created those, let's go ahead and add instruments to each of the folders. Great. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and color those the same color as our folders. We just use control and scroll and get to the color you want. Okay, now that those are colored, we can go into the mixer. Now there's this option where you can right click a track and choose add group channel to selected channels. So let's do that with our keys track. It gives you this pop up. You're going to want stereo and stereo out and create inside folder and name it, we're going to name keys. So now if you go into the routing up on the top, you can see that our one keys track that's in blue is routed to the correct group track keys. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for each of these tracks. Right click, add to group channel, name it, and repeat. Okay, we have our group tracks now. Let's go ahead and color them the same track, uh, color as our folders. My group tracks folder, my master bus folder, um, any of my mains, inputs and outputs are always colored in red. That just makes them easier to find. Okay, now let's head back to our mixer and we're going to select each of the group tracks. Right click and add group channel to selected channels. What we're doing is creating a master track. You can exclude this step if you want. Um, I prefer having a master track that is not stereo out, that's separate from stereo out, just to be safe. Okay, we're gonna create a lot of different tracks now. So I'm gonna use this uh, right click and duplicate tracks. So you click this and it will automatically create a duplicate you can always double check by opening the channel settings and checking your routing, which is located right here. And I can see that it's routed correctly to the keys channel. Okay, let's load up our first instrument. Let's name that. And now for the reason I use Cubase over every other DAW, disabling unused instruments. You just go here, right click, and choose disable track. Now what that does is it unloads the instrument off of your RAM, but it keeps your settings. So all you have to do to reactivate it is right click and choose enable track. Then it will reload your instrument and it's back onto your RAM. This is the coolest feature and the reason creating a project template is so worth it. 
you can have literally thousands of disabled tracks that are ready to enable as soon as you want them. So there's no more searching and scrolling for your samples. It's amazing. Let's disable that one and move on. Okay, I went ahead and created a bunch of keys that I commonly use. And now we're gonna create another folder inside of this keys folder. And we're gonna name this unused. Now the purpose for this is to have all of your disabled tracks located inside the unused folder. So what you do is when you wanna come uh, try out a key instrument, you open up the unused, uh, grab one that you like and pull it out. That way your project size stays relatively small and you don't get all of these unused tracks that are taking up space. Cool, let's go ahead and create unused folders for each of these groups. By the time we're done with this template, I'll probably have added around 200 to 300 tracks. Um, you can add as many as you want. I have friends that have templates with over a thousand tracks. Um, really, the sky is the limit. Fair warning for you, uh, this does take a lot of time, you know? But the time spent creating this template is going to be hugely beneficial for you in the future. Okay, I spent a few hours well, actually more than a few, adding all of the instruments that I wanted. So let's go through some of these folders and I'll show you what I've added. Keys is really simple. There's really not that many instruments. One thing that I did do though, is I included three empty contacts. That way, if these instruments aren't what I'm looking for, I can open up something completely empty and start from scratch. In synth, I have a little bit more. We can go through these. These are all of my pads plucks, oh, pulses, plucks, and miscellaneous. In strings, I'm using a lot of folders. Uh, I have a lot of different things. I decided to put guitar in here. Uh, I was debating whether I should make a separate folder of guitar. I just don't have that many instruments of guitar that I use. Now, I want to point out something really important for this template. Let's open up this instrument. This is Cinematic Studio Strings, uh, the Spiccato. Sounds like this. Now, Cubase has this feature which allows you to edit the MIDI start points. It's right over here in the Instrument Inspector. It's this little button here. If you hover over it, it says Track Delay in Milliseconds. You can set a value for this. So, uh, I went into this instrument and played with the click track. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I played in this little part. It sounds like this. Now the reason this track delay in milliseconds is so important is because when you trigger this sample with a keyboard or whatever, there is a delay from when contact recognizes the MIDI to when the sample plays. Now this is different from the buffer size of Cubase, which is also important, but let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna reset this number back to zero, and I will play this with the click track so you can hear. You're gonna notice that the string spiccatos are dragging behind the click track. Listen to this. That's because this specific sample library has triggers that happen after the click track. So how do we fix that? We use this milliseconds. Now you have to test this with each individual instrument. It's not the same for everyone, but this specific library, it sounds pretty good at negative 60 milliseconds. So let's listen again with the click track. So that's with it on, here's with it off again. It's a huge difference. Now I will say that the most important instruments for this are strings and brass. Everything else you don't have to include in your template, but these are the specific instruments that I make sure to do it for. Okay, here's a look at the choir. I only have a couple of choir libraries that are preloaded. I don't need much here. Here's the brass. I have it separated into sections. 
Woodwinds, I don't have much going on. I don't use woodwinds that often. Percussion, I separated into realistic sounds and hybrid sounds. So take a look at these. In SFX, I divided into impacts, broms, rises, whooshes, and then miscellaneous. And now that we have all of our folders set up, let's go ahead and make a final folder for miscellaneous audio. These audio channels are just for if I have to ever bring in any extra samples or anything miscellaneous. Um, I will bring something in and then I will move it to the correct folder. Also, don't forget to route it to the correct group channel after you do that. Okay, there's a couple of things we want to do at the end here. I'm going to add an extra piano just for scratch ideas. Okay, I added those, and I will also add a ruler track at the top. This is super useful because it will show you in seconds how long your track is. The last thing I will add is a tempo track. And I'll just add that at the top. Okay, I wanted to try this template out and make sure it works. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit subscribe and check out some of my other videos. As always, you can leave comments down below and I'll be happy to help. Thanks and enjoy.